it's Monday on the first scheduled 9-11 of our lifetime. Ladies and gentlemen, you know it's got to be go time for happy hour. No, no, too dark, too dark. Our whole purpose was to bring some lightness to all of this. Yeah, you know, that's literally what you said right before we went live. Hey, let's bring some mirth and merriment to the world. And we begin with our first scheduled 9-11. Okay, yeah, but also, this is like a weird-ass scheduled 9-11. Although, I it's guess not every... not a schedule. No, it's a slow-motion 9-11. Well, no, 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 no. But, 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 but this was... Obviously, if... the first scheduled 9-11 was 9-11. What happened to Building 7? <laughs> <laughs> although, although, I guess, like, bombing raids were probably... There was word that went out on the, on there before then but but this was in the news because you are the host of politics 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 uh yes. it, it, it was discussed that it's like this is it this is the week this is at the top of the murray model gonna be the most like who oh, boy yeah, buckle yeah, in yeah 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 yeah, so uh, this is going to be where we get to the height of our death curve, um, according to some of the projections, and so we will see uh, uh, where that goes. But yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't realize that that that's the element of this pandemic. That no, 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 no. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I did not mean to intimate that I believe this is all a conspiracy <laughs> of a <laughs> of a created, manufactured virus that was meant to destroy all of humanity. <laughs> what I meant to say is it's weird. To like have a weather report and for everyone to say this is when the hurricane is going to hit landfall, only the hurricane is a pandemic. We've talked about this on the show a lot, but Brian, you have a habit of sometimes going to to see before mentioning that you are already aware of A and B. Oh. And this is maybe <laughs> the most... Yeah, I, I, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. You are 100% correct. And this this is a known flaw in, in Brian well, yeah, OS. I'm just, I'm just saying, yeah, it's just, it's just a part of the process. And here we are uh, uh, joining you yet again on on a Monday here. Uh, how was your weekend? Uh, did you have did you have a, uh, a okay. any anything interesting happen on the weekend? Uh, you uh, th man, there's a lot of good news to talk about. I felt okay. L I'll start with the bad because the bad wasn't that bad. I avoided work and I felt guilty because some of the team is starting to notice that I've been avoiding the work. <laughs> ah. and, and part of it is because we're we're up at the top of the curve and people are just like, hey, so um. Do you, do, you, do, you, do you plan for us to do the things that cause the money to come in? <laughs> and, um, yeah. Uh, to which I respond, yes, 100%. Just got this Westworld to get cut up on. Uh, got to finish Ozarks. Going to start watching Tales from the Loop. Also going to make Hearth, uh, uh, Hearthstone Legend. Uh, that, that's the only thing on my plate. Outside of those yeah. things, going to do all the things uh, for us. Which, uh, by the way, success. I, I hit legend uh, on, on the Hearthstone again. <laughs> I bet you were going to say success. I actually did some work. No, no, good. no. no. Uh, me, 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 me. <laughs> Today's the day I go back to work. Come on. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, you, you, you hit legend. Uh, congratulations. How was this ladder experience compared to the, uh, the old ladder experience? I got to tell you, I think that we had a very special experience that last time because between the two of us, it was an unobtainable goal. It was true magic it was going up to the cliffs of mordor and throwing a ring over the edge it was something that we could barely conceive of much less actually achieve and when i did under the old system it was very clear that the system was meant to keep the man down and uh and and uh, by luck and we've talked about this on on night attack uh by luck you happened to be spectating at what felt like you know, yeah. an unbeatable boss monster being defeated. Uh, yeah. This time was part of it is because I, I, I have a little more free time and uh, all of a sudden I could dedicate a lot of hours to it. This one felt a little more calculated, a little more mathematical, a little more like, well, I clearly am having a 58% win rate. All I have to do is dedicate enough hours to grinding and I'll eventually... Yeah. Uh, cross this threshold Yo, yeah yeah you will you will get there eventually and the fact that it happened on the fifth day of the month which is uh by the way for the uninitiated is is a season in hearthstone speak uh the fact that it happened on the fifth day sort of uh oh oh can i tell you something weird about it as sure. i got closer to legend 
I increasingly started to see weirder stuff like Hearthstone not telling me the rank of who I was playing against. And then it stopped telling me the name of who I was playing against. It just said your opponent. And I was like, what? That's weird. Whatever. And I kept on going. Yeah. And eventually I, I won and, and entered Legend. But then once I hit Legend, it shows me who I'm playing against. And all of a sudden I'm playing against like rank nine people on Diamond and rank seven really? people on Diamond. And I realized, oh, wait, that totally makes sense because nobody at rank nine wants to know that they're up against a legend player. Yeah. But meanwhile, a legend player has already made it. So it's like they should know that they're up against a rank nine person so they could do they could try out wacky or stuff or whatever just to test it out. Yeah. yeah. So, um, uh, yeah. So I think secretly I was playing a bunch of legend people as I went up the ladder and then uh, and then now that I'm on legend, it's revealing to me that I'm playing a bunch of people, which is a weird thing to do because it's like, I don't want to be the guy on the ladder higher than then kick, kicking him in the face or whatever. Well, I mean, that, that, that's just probably the algorithm, right? They just need somebody to play that match and that match is going to come faster if they play a legend person and, and there they go, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, people are suggesting that I should listen to a little show called The Angry Chicken. Well, oh, you how about even better? I join them and then begin every phrase with, as a legend player, dot, 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 <laughs> in this meta. But are, are you are you are you going to go on? Uh, oh, oh, keep playing oh, or, or no, go on the no, angry no, no. chicken. Are, yeah. Are you oh, no, no, no. I should totally go on the angry chicken because uh, we're in this weird place where I don't know if you know this. Did you know that podcast numbers are way, way down? Yeah. So, because nobody's commuting, right? But yeah, I mean, at least mine that I noticed, they're not like tremendously down, but also it's like I'm doing a thing that is more in the moment, right? So it's like I would assume the people are probably the people that are interested in politics are no less interested in politics now that there's a pandemic for which has gigantic political ramifications. But uh, I would assume if you were doing something more in the hobby genre or more in the like curiosity genre that the, the, there probably is a lot of suffering. So, um, yeah, I, I had a bit that I was trying to set up with this, but I, I, I've, I've lost it. But well, okay. So, but meanwhile, like the people doing podcasts are more than yeah. ever, right <laughs> now, now's a good time to be selling a, a podcast making kit. I mean, there's certainly a lot of people that are trying things. I don't even know what they really are. Some people are doing, are putting a lot of effort into it. Some people are just kind of turning on mics. Like, but man, if, if you've ever wanted to have a Twitch stream or a podcast, now is apparently the, the, the go time. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that come out of it and understand more about it and are going to keep going. And, and that'll be a great origin story for them. But uh, I think a lot of we we might already be done with the first wave. I think I think the first wave of people might already be done playing a ukulele on Facebook Live. By the way, joining us in the chat, Meryl Barr points out trying things you say. We should all celebrate Meryl Barr, one of our very own, who just hit Twitch affiliate status with uh, his Netflix watch parties. Thank you so much for joining us, Meryl. Uh, this is fantastic, man. Uh, yeah, no, uh, Meryl's stuff is, uh, is great. He, he does like Netflix watch parties. Um, but again, it's like, uh, uh, anybody who's trying stuff, that's awesome. I'm, I'm super pumped that people are trying things because, uh, uh, I've never subscribed to the idea that like, there's too many podcasts. It's like, no, uh, there were, there, we, we long got out. The only time that it, that really mattered was in the first 30. As soon as we were beyond 30 podcasts, they might as well be 300 million. Right. Like, you know, there's there's just it's it's always going to be a rotating cast of characters. So what what do you think makes for a successful podcast in an age where like uh, to some extent you could point to serial and say, well, NPR has a huge fan base and they're able to push it, you know, on their established platform to get people over to it. Um, but but I think you and I are of the same opinion where there's kind of a flight to quality and ultimately your stuff has has to stand on its own. What what do you think the recipe is? Well, 
I think you're right. There is a flight to quality. There, there's, but the, you know this, uh, you know, probably better than anybody because you've talked a lot about it. That there is the first step of doing a thing. Like you can't walk into any genre and not like bump into literally every piece of furniture in this darkened room before you realize where the light switch is. And only then can you figure out exactly what, oh, okay, this is why the highest form of this art does this. Right. This is what, like, this is what it takes to get me from here to there. Like, to for, for Meryl, Meryl Barr, for example. So I was on his show, and I was like, hey, look, here are just little things that, from my perspective, you can you can change easily. Like, here are the biggest uh, hurdles for a new viewer coming in, things that you can be done easier. Here's ways that you can make it look more visually exciting. Uh, and and for Meryl's initial thing is like, eh, I, I don't really have a lot of room. I'm in a, I'm in a small apartment. And it's like, uh, see, like, this is really where you can't blame him. You can't blame anybody when you first start because it's like you don't have that frame of mind. You don't have the frame of mind of like, oh, no, I really – could only have this much space to shoot up against a blank wall. And if I put a green thing behind it, now my floating head can be in space with lasers shooting out of it. And it can be the most visually interesting thing. But until you, you, you walk through and stick with something for, for a while, I think that's, that's the biggest key. And, and, you know, for, for any of this, the, the big issue for anybody, if you've done it for a week, if you were one of those people that started on, uh, a Twitch channel a week ago that started a podcast uh, a week ago, then uh, maybe get the podcast, get a few more episodes out. But like, if you're Twitch streaming, now's the time you look back at what you're doing and then go find comparisons uh, elsewhere on the platform and just understand, okay, I'm here and don't even think about, well, I like what I'm doing versus I don't like what they're doing. Just look at what they're doing and try to understand it as a viewer, try to separate your ego as much as possible and and then say, hey, where where can I go? What can I do right now to make it just a, a little bit better? Because I know for me, I've seen a bunch of people that are like, uh, uh, you know, in different phases of entertainment that have tried Twitch stuff and some of it's garbage, but some of it's really good. And that's people bringing a professional aesthetic to, you know, this uh, this this medium. And I'm like, Damn, I got to start ripping some stuff off because this looks awesome. Yeah, there's this weird um, duopoly between like what you have to offer and what the world is hungry for. So it's like what you have to offer, you know, your authentic expertises, your experiences, whatever went through your day or the thoughts that you have. But then there's what the world is hungry for, and they might not be the same thing. And so uh, that's one of the things that we actually talked about. I don't, I guess. No, we did this on Thursday. We talked about this on Friday. We, we we did the live stream on how to do a live stream on the Scam Nation channel, right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 You did so the uh, yeah. that was one of the things that we dialed in on is is like, uh, remember who you're there to work for and and try to serve their interests. Also, uh, I think on Friday we were just as we were wrapping up. I was talking about the fact that Bonnie wanted to do a Zoom get together with the uh, some of the folks yes. that, we, that we see every yes. Friday, and you quite correctly uh, introduced me to the concept of the uh, Schadenfreude is not the right idea, but the idea that they're like this is your time to sh shine, this is your time to strut, and uh, damn if you're not a hundred percent right, it was a blast. I had a really good time for like three hours, essentially hosting a live stream for three people. Uh, mainly sub, uh, all about flexing on how awesome our setup was. Yeah. Oh, dude. I mean, people like now they're here on Mars with us where we've been living. And they're like, oh, like, oh, yeah, before I thought Mars was gross and weird. But now that I know the emperor. Wow, this is cool. Well, we, we even uh, because I had never used Zoom before, but we had to install Zoom in order to do the meeting or whatever. Uh, yeah. There's that virtual background thing. Do you, do you know this this like practical joke prank of, of messing with your virtual background? Do you know this? 
I've seen a few things, but but uh, maybe I don't know the one you're going to tell me. So so while we were on the line with two or three other folks, uh, I, I described this, that I had seen it on Reddit. The idea is you step away from the mic, you record a short looping video of your background, only you peek your head in from the left, then you walk around the camera, then you peek your head in from the right, then you walk around the camera again, then you hamburglar your way across the background or whatever. And uh, 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 we recorded it for the amusement of everybody who was there on the stream and we played it and tried it and it worked and it was amazing. And then, uh, uh, and then sure enough, a fourth person joins the stream and then all of a sudden there's a little bit of a wink and a nod as to what Bonnie should be up to. And then, uh, uh I just replaced the virtual background and, uh, it went like, like two iterations before this person realized that in the background with Bonnie was Bonnie peeking her head in hamburglaring <laughs> across and, and, and the whole nine yards. But when it finally landed, it was, it was a bit like, uh, you know, when the acid hits. Oh, totally. Yeah, no, there is, I've seen a bunch of them. I mean, I know a lot of brands also are doing their own, like have a, a hamburglary background today on zoom like you know uh, you know it's hamburger helper glove or whatever but uh, uh that that was the funniest one that i saw was uh a dude who it was just his background but there was a door in the background and it was just him accidentally opening the door and seeing himself on the computer and going like oh sorry sorry and just like closing the door <laughs> back and that's amazing uh, but, but it was surprisingly, uh, surprisingly enjoyable. I, I didn't expect to not feel exhausted. Yeah, you were, you were a little bummed. You were like, like, oh, geez, I got to Now I, I, I work in front of these cameras and now I got to be on another camera. What the hell? Yeah. Uh, that's definitely what I expected, but it didn't turn out that way at all. Although I, I was on a Zoom call watching uh, WrestleMania yesterday with um, our friend Katie and James. Can, can, and, can you uh, describe what that experience was like? Because I saw all the tweets not realizing that there was anything unusual, fundamentally unusual about this oh. WrestleMania. It was not until an hour ago that you mentioned the reminder that, that there can't be a stadium full of people that I realized... Oh, that's why everything was bonkers, and some people loved it, and some people did not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was a crazy experience. Uh, you know, I think that on one hand there was just like the methadone of the story, like, and some of the matches kind of felt like it, where it's like, all right, well, we gotta keep moving, and it sucks that WrestleMania is during a plague, but we got to get this, this, you know, this, if we keep the story on ice too long, it'll start to smell. So let's just get it the hell out of here. Uh, but then some of it was really inspired. There were, I think there were people that were like actively trying as artists to be like, okay, like we can't have one of the pillars that like holds our entire like art up. What do we do? And it, it's a lot of like the same stuff with magic. Right. And, and you did the whole, thing on that you have to deliberately understand that beyond people who you're doing a trick for, they're not just spectators. They're not just like trick receptacles, right? They're also social proof. Uh, there's also the layering of if you're trying to set up one thing, you set up one thing with one person and now it's more magical if they're strangers. It might be, be more exciting if they're sisters, like there's all these elements that are built into it that now you can't have. And you know, you just do that, but with the uh, fake underwear fighting. <laughs> uh, uh, so overall good, you give it a thumbs up or do you give it like a thumbs up with an asterisk that I, says I thumbs just, up for being in the middle of a plague? Number one, I, I, I just have no idea how anybody like I, I've, I've lost any and all will to be a wrestling evangelist. Like I'll, I'll talk about it for as much as anybody wants to talk to me about it. But uh, uh, I don't want to do a thing. Where it's like you got to watch it because then there's invariably somebody who's just like, I hate it. It's stupid. You know, I tried. I couldn't. And it's like, all right, cool. But that being said, uh, this would be something that I think unless you are very interested in this as like kind of a math problem of like, Hey, how does an event with 80,000 people turn into 
a thing shot in a warehouse. Like, how do you bring that element of grandeur to something so small? Like, then it's worth it to watch it from a stage production perspective. If you like wrestling, obviously it's worth watching. Um, and then really the only things that are of note were there each night, they did it over two nights. Each night had a match that was shot like a movie. Like it had a lot of, like obviously it was shot over a period of several hours and it had all the trappings and lighting and stuff like that. All the mic work that now everything that came through was clear. Uh, and both were very, very interesting for their own perspectives. But uh, in, in a lot of ways, it, it might be the future of what they have to do because there's only so long that people fighting in a warehouse is going to be as interesting as it could be when you could be, you know, going out and, and telling these crazy cinematic stories. I'll tell you what I tried over the weekend and sadly I only made it like two thirds of the way through, but I tried watching a John Oliver last week tonight episode. And have, have you seen any of his stuff since the absence of a, of a live audience? Uh, no, I have not. It is really bizarre because it reads like a Philip DeFranco thing or whatever. It reads yeah. like, like a think piece straight to camera YouTube video, except for somebody hasn't gotten the memo that now you use jump cuts and non sequiturs and you sell your own bits with a chuckle or a laugh or a derisive whatever. Instead, he delivers it in that same John Oliver style, complete with an ang, uh, complete with a brief uh, wacky Photoshop and then a punchline. Followed yeah. by silence because he's waiting for the audience that isn't there to applaud. Yeah. yeah. And uh uh it and I I wonder if behind the scenes there wasn't some discussion about like, hey man, this feels really awkward and weird, and it's because you're not aping the tropes of YouTube. But I wonder if they're like, but we're not YouTube. Uh, sorry, this is me being John Oliver. Uh, yeah. who, who said this is a version of John Oliver who some for some reason hates YouTube. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. but but I would imagine that there's some kind of like, no, 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 I don't want to adopt the tropes of that because I don't want this to become this lesser than thing. Yeah, I, I mean, I I get the sense that there's a lot of TV that's just waiting for the world to restart. And like anything that they do, this is basically the like sweatpants of television. Like, yeah, they know they shouldn't be wearing them past noon, but who's going to judge? It's the apocalypse, right? Like that, that, well, everybody's phoning it in. We're all literally just doing this because there's still GM ads that they've purchased. So we need the real estate or else, uh, you know, we, we, we won't be able to cash that check. Uh, but, but they understand that they don't care. And the audience understands that they don't care, but I'm with you. I would, I would say like the, the smartest. And again, th this goes to where like wrestling kind of is for better or worse, a leading indicator in terms of entertainment. Like uh, instead of just kind of pretending that this isn't weird, they've taken some steps to make it evolve. Right. Because even if they never go back to this, this week's show has to not, blow and and i think that there's a lot of tv john oliver it sounds like uh, included that is just like man whatever these are our forgotten episodes and not looking at it as like man what what crazy thing can we do right now like what thing that we could never do before like let like let, let's just think about it in in a whole different way uh to make it better or bigger did you know that william shakespeare uh the globe theater was shut down during a plague and William during that time that he was shelter in place, uh, William Shakespeare wrote three of his epic, uh, plays. Uh, yes, I did because I follow enough, uh, uh, uh rise and grind, uh, hustle idiots on Twitter that, you know, that's, that's, <laughs> you know, it's like, like, Oh, uh, you know, like you, you, if you, if you leave this, a uh, plague without abs that you need to recalibrate your inner muscle, the brain. Uh, by the way, 
Are you still committed to the COVID-19 or are you, are you a little I'm bit? Not, look, I didn't, I didn't choose the life. The life chose me. Like I, I didn't, you know, whatever, man, I'm just eating a lot of food. Like I'm going to get fat as hell. I'm, you I'm, know, the I'm, goodness... I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit feeling like I owe it to myself to start, you know, I don't know, running in circles or some shit. I don't know. No, not look, you're going to be the skinny one. Just, <laughs> just, like, just no. I'll tell you what, I'm not now. I'm that, going to be, I'm going to be, I'm going to be, fu- I'm going to be so much fucking fatter than you, dude. This is going to be. This is the like imagine it like this. This is gonna actually make us do more content together because you know you'll you're 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 virtually losing pounds just by standing next to me as I as I widen like the universe. <laughs> what, what what's funny is like uh, back when we did the TV show, uh, I was definitely very committed to being svelte and skinny and elven as as we did hacking the system. Uh, Jason was just uh, excited to show up at the time, but then I watched Jason commit to losing a bunch of weight and. Now he's definitely the skinny one on the modern rogue. Brian Brian is at most charitably the uh, the tough one. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's about as good as it gets. Uh, yeah, man. All right, hey, uh, uh, Brian, you want to do some entertainment news? God damn right I do. It's my one highlight of the day. All right. Um, celebrities. What do you think about it? What do they know? Uh, 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 Here's what I know. I know that they all got a check from Queeby. I know that they all have a show on Queeby. I know that very few of them had put a lot of time, energy, or effort into their pitches for Queeby because Queeby showed up saying, Hi, it's me, the Monopoly man. Whoops, I mean Queeby. Uh, Who wants money? Well, they also, uh, in, in addition to getting all their checks from Queeby, Brian... They're also going to give back. Announced today, Lady Gaga curated COVID-19 benefit concert uh, that will be broadcast live on ABC, NBC, and CBS, featuring all of the late night hosts, all the jimmies. They're all going to jimmy up against each other uh, because Brian, the celebrities are here. See, I mean, I know a lot of people have been pouting, but man. These celebrities, they're back and better than ever. See, I'm glad to cure the world. Glad you brought this shit up because personally, and I'm sorry, come at me. Go ahead. At me, at Schwood on Twitter. I think it's fucked up that anybody would throw a benefit for COVID-19. COVID-19 is the enemy. Why are you throwing a benefit for the enemy? I don't get it. Uh, uh, in addition to Lady Gaga and uh, uh, Billie Eilish, Alanis Morissette, Andrea Bocelli, Billy Joe Armstrong from Green Day, uh, and then a bunch of other people that, uh, some of which I know, some of which I don't, they're all going to perform. They're all going to perform and they're going to heal the world. They, I mean, they got to give us a song. If there's one thing that, like, the, the real celebrity gift that I want, I'm being serious here, yeah. is to give us a song that we can either think is good or laugh at. I don't care which. I just need one of them. I was about to say, I, like, I was halfway through pulling up the Imagine Instagram story. <laughs> yes. And that was great, right? Because we could laugh at them. They were, they were being stupid. And it was, it was a, it was a, like, super low effort idea that they were just like, well, of course they'll love it. We're celebrities. Before we talk about the rest of the celebrity news, can we talk about just how tone deaf the in general, like uh, specifically, I guess I'm talking about Larry David's statement where it's just like, Larry David, you are a literal billionaire with pet projects and anybody who on the planet will take your call. You leaning back into a comfy, easy chair and admonishing the rest of humanity for the audacity of going outside trying to earn a buck and literally mocking anybody who might want to go outside because they have legitimate reasons and act as though it's the dumbest crap in the world and what you should do is watch TV. Coincidentally, maybe my show, Curb Your Enthusiasm on HBO. Like, I don't think... That or anyone else's admonishment and shaming is landing very well. So, you, because that one was actually discussed, I think fairly, fairly positively, at least in in the circles that that I saw it. But, that, but that's why uh, I it, chose it is because yeah. it is a best of breed execution because it was lighthearted and it was funny, but at its core, 
Its message was so crass, rude, and elitist. He's basically saying, what are you dummies doing? Why don't you just cash the checks that come to you from NBC, from your show, Seinfeld? Why would you go outside? I literally don't understand the problems of people in an economic position different than mine. It's me, Larry David. I play Bernie Sanders. Also, I'm going to ask Bernie to drop out of the race. All right. So, all right, I think, Brian, we've identified a problem, celebrities being out of touch. So let's go ahead and write the handbook for him. Okay. Like, what is, I'm a celebrity, Uh, uh, my name is Joe uh, Lightbulb Flash, and uh, 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 I've come to you, Brian, because you were recommended through my agent's assistant's best friend uh, that you were the person to help me craft the perfect celebrity social media message uh, I've just come off my private beach. Don't worry. It's totally private. Nobody's allowed there. So I'm totally fine to go to the beach. Uh, but I'm, I'm giving you a call right now. Uh, ring, 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 ring. No, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 oh, damn. I wanted to have a clever opening. Um, uh, hi, it's me. <laughs> hi, Brian. It's uh, Joe Lightbulb Flash from, <laughs> uh, the, my show, the Lightbulb Flash Review. Have you seen it? Yeah, <laughs> yes, I sure have. It's amazing. Sorry, I just got a tweet from D from Canada saying, "Oh man, this next year we're gonna get to, we're gonna get to, get to string up all these COVID hot takes that will have uh, aged like a bucket of milk." Which I, I I'm just I'm liking that tweet. Okay, so I want to do a tweet. It's funny you should mention Twitter. I didn't know that you had it, um, <laughs> but I have it. I'm a celebrity, and I wanted. Make a video. I can maybe put it on Instagram. Uh, uh, I was thinking about this. Hey, it's your old pal Joe Lightbulb Flash of the Lightbulb Flash Review. Um, just uh, do yourself a favor and cook a million filet mignon steaks at the same time, like I'm doing right now. <laughs> That's the way that you. Who wouldn't want to stay in? Also, I have three girlfriends, and none of them have COVID and a billion dollars. <laughs> and then I'm gonna. Dive into a, a bucket of a uh, bucket of money. Uh, okay, uh, okay. Uh, uh, Joe Lightbulb Flash. Look, uh, yeah. I understand that that you're speaking your own truth, and everybody has their own truth. And I I respect the fact that you're honesty, speaking. Yours. Honesty is the cornerstone of my character, Brian. Yeah, let's let's speak to the truth to the people who are having to go outside. Maybe some of those who who need the money and who are I don't know maybe providing vital services or maybe they're mistaken about whether or not they're providing vital services the wait important- hold on wait a minute wait a minute. people who need money hold on i'm just throwing money at the receiver okay uh, that's not why actually they, why going don't they have oh. the money see this why one of the, get the money Joe Lightbulb Flash, uh, notice that your name is not Joe Teleporter Flash. If your name was uh, Teleporter Flash, that might work. But see, what you're doing is you're just showing off all the money you have to everybody yeah. who has legitimate reasons to risk the life of them and their loved ones. Now, keep in mind, each individual person is the arbiter of their own destiny. They're the captain of their own ship, and they're evaluating what risks are worth taking and what risks aren't. And in the case that they go outside, oftentimes they've evaluated that they're quite literally willing to risk their own lives in order to get the economic funds to fuel their family's lifestyle. So maybe instead of shaming them, we can celebrate them as heroes for staying at home and remind them that staying at home while it doesn't feel like a heroic thing is actually quite great. Um, Okay. Hey, this sounds great. You're great. This is amazing. This is great. I got to let you go right now because girlfriend number two just burnt her hand on steak number 41. So I'll talk to you later. All right. Get out of here, Joe Lightbulb Flash. (laughs) Oh, freaking Joe. What a dick face. No, but but, but, but it it is a curious move for those who uh, – the people who need most to hear the message that you're doing a good thing and it may feel weird to stay at home, but what you're doing matters and you're all heroes – the people who need to hear that aren't the ones who are ready to slam dunk on people who are going to work in this time of crisis. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess there's also this, this, well, let me ask you this. We're on the, the line of like rightful thing to be upset about versus straw man. Are we at the like, random person who's at the beach or the random person who's 
like outside when maybe they they're not immediately doing something. They're not exercising. They're not running, but they are outside or they're they are doing something that is in close quarters with people. Like, where where are we just generally on like uh, is that a straw man? Are we finding the one person that's doing it, or do, should we because this is a major problem? Yell and scream. Here is the Brushwood hypothesis. Everybody yeah. who is twenty three years old or younger. Uh, is pardoned. They have a blanket pardoned because they're, they're, there's no way that your dumb, underdeveloped, young, stupid, dumb, dumb brain, white, milk yeah. toast, <laughs> white guilt. <laughs> yeah. um, there's no way your dumb brain can conceive of it. Everybody who's 24 years and older is worse than Hitler. That That's the I, Brushwood well, hypothesis. Yeah, that's. I think it's funny because when when they had the video of all the spring break kids in Florida, and they were like, like, well, why are you doing? It? It's like, well, because it's spring break, man. It's spring break. And it's like, it sounded. I just, I knew I was old because I've been that person, right? I would have been that stupid, uh, but it actually reminded me of your daughters, like, like your daughters who I've watched grow up. I'm like, oh my god. That's them. Like that's like just a grown. That's them up in like version. twenty minutes. That's yeah, them. No. Well, no, 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 not them. Like in terms of age, but just it's like if you told, you know, if if uh, uh, one of their birthday parties, I don't know uh, uh, if, if if one of them is going to fall during this, but you have to say, "Hey, sorry, sweetheart, we can't have your party with your friends at the place that you would normally want it to be." They would say, no, I want it to be there. And then if they had the agency, they would probably do it there anyway, right? Whether or not it was a, a health hazard. And that's literally what these people were. Yeah, dude. Uh, I'll tell you what. I think that there was a brief moment that this was all going to be politicized. But I'm rolling that back now that as of today, freaking uh, one person who tried to politicize it, uh, one Boris Johnson, prime minister of uh, the United Kingdom, tried to say like, hey man, I'm going to shake all the hands and today went and I see you. I'm going to guess that's the end of the politic uh, politicization of, of this issue. Oh no. I mean, I think we're, we're just, <laughs> I mean, as somebody who does a politics podcast, Sorry. oh boy. To, uh, uh, to be clear, I think, uh, uh, let me, let me clarify until, until we're post peak from now till post peak. I think that, uh, the politicization is going to, I think right now our scheduled nine 11 <laughs> is, is everybody who's hunkered down and maybe you're whispering while the bombs are dropping all over the place, but, but you're not shouting just yet. Well, I think that, yeah, I think we've kind of seen the end of the, it's just the flu. Oh, I yeah. think that that I think that that is that's a harder one to work with now because the flu never made the, the head of a G7 nation go to the hospital to intensive <laughs> like, care. Least, Jeez. Yeah, to intensive care. That that's a rarity that the influenza does that one. But that's uh, also you you want to talk about like uh if the enemy if we're at war and the enemy is covid how often does the enemy that you're at war with get to have a private meeting that lasts a week or more, possibly ending with the assassination of a G7 leader? <laughs> yeah, right? Right? And, and they got to him. <laughs> they got him. <laughs> they got him. Right? They're having a very in-depth, very personal private conversation right this minute as we record this. Yeah. Uh, dude, it's it's crazy. So, all right. So, so where, where are we at? Who deserves to be yelled at? This is, the, this is a good segment. Who deserves to be yelled at? You say that any of the kids that were on the spring beach, the, the spring break beach, like uh, they, they don't deserve to be yelled at. Tw well, uh, twenty three, yeah, no. If they're younger than, if they're twenty three or younger, then they don't deserve to be yelled at. But but here here's the weird part: is for those who were downplaying the virus in public in a media setting, really they were sort of making a bet, and we can fault them for having bet wrong. Uh, and and it's and and some of them are going to be too afraid to admit that they were wrong, and and they'll double down and then just make an embarrassment of themselves. But I I do feel like we shouldn't fault them for making a bet because in an alternate reality where COVID is let's say much less worse than it turns out, you know, we live in the reality where. We weren't sure if it's as bad or worse than the flu or whatever, if it was or was not as infectious or whatever. Everybody placed their bets. 
uh, the heroes are people who publicly said, whoops, I was wrong. Dr. Drew is one of those. Uh, the villains are those who are doubling down in, in spite of the evidence. Um, so uh, I, 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 hmm. I don't know. I don't, I, uh, the answer to so your wait, question so is, who? I don't know. All right. What about uh, Blood of Christ Lady? Oh, no, I don't know anything about this. Who's this lady? Is it oh, that bitch Carol look Baskins? This, it it's that, that bitch, bitch Carol, Carol Baskins. Baskins down there in Florida. Um, no, no, look up look up Blood of Christ Lady. <sighs> I'll bet you you'll be able to find her. Okay. Uh, but this was this was the lady. She was the she was in the barrel of social media on Sunday because there are some parts of the country where you are still allowed to go to church. And so this was a big church, and this lady was on her way in. And so, uh, yeah, there we go. That's the, the, the first uh, CNN link there. All right, here we go. I'm covered in Jesus' blood. Defiant churchgoer tells CNN she can't get sick because she's a Christian. Look, uh, uh, there are people who are going to want to say that she's evil. All right, all right, just, just, no, no, no. Watch first. Watch first. Oh, watch first. Wait, oh, my God. There's, there's a video. All right, here yes, we go. Yes, yes, that's it. Uh, 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 uh. Driving out of this Ohio parking lot, is a woman who just attended a church service with dozens of other people, including children. Can I ask you about your decision to go to church to be inside that building? I wouldn't be anywhere else. Aren't you concerned you could infect other people if you get sick inside? No. People who don't go to this no. church. No, I'm covered in Jesus' blood. I'm covered in Jesus' blood. But what blood. about other people who don't go to this church who you might encounter? All of these people go to this church. No, but you're going to be in places where other people I go are. to the grocery store every day. I'm in Walmart, what? Home Depot, all of those people. But you people. could get them sick from what happens They the could church. get me sick, but they're not because I'm covered in his blood. Thank you very much. So this is textbook. God, man, if there's right. ever a better time for everybody to read how to have impossible conversations, this is this is textbook trapping somebody and refusing to give them uh, what what Peter Bogosian calls a, a golden bridge, like a, a classy way to exit. Like, you know, a golden bridge would be like, uh, you know what? I didn't think it was a big deal and I wasn't worried about it until uh, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson went to ICU. And then I realized that maybe this is a serious thing. So, so uh, your 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 perspective is that the the better way to explore our modern world through covered in Jesus's blood, lady, is is to give her more context. No, I mean, first of all, there's no way to do it in this kind of soundbite, and that's part of the reason that no. we're in this highly polarized atmosphere. Is is that this guy has to tell a news story in 20 seconds, and there's no room for nuance in that particular situation. Um, and, well, so and also this lady said the thing, because if it was, I'm really, my faith is really important. And I believe that, uh, uh we're taking precautions like, but, but, uh, this is far too important to me. That doesn't make the news, but she said she was covered in Jesus in Jesus's blood, which I, I've been around religion a while, Brian, you've grown up in Texas. There's only so much you could separate yourself from a big organized religion. Uh, I don't know if I've ever heard I'm covered in Jesus's blood, like as if it's uh, like a like a double dare thing. Well, like, you this know? is this is uh, this should be a new night attack bit where we I, I guess this is kind of what Billy on the street was all built out of. Take a bunch of people who are not accustomed to speaking in punchy sound bites and demand by surprise and fiat by virtue of the cameras around you that they suddenly have to speak in sound bites and. Yeah, that 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 metaphorically speaking, there can be various situations I can think of where you would say I am covered in Jesus's blood and a bunch of no, people I mean, would she, clap. She used she used my thing whenever I get interviewed, because as a reporter, I knew I was looking for this. You give the one sentence metaphor. Right. That's it. If you ever want to make free advice to everybody you ever want to make television you ever want to make a newspaper you want to ever want to make a magazine if you want to make sure that you are going to be there in the final version uh you have to just one big metaphor that's in a sentence because that's the only way that it's usable so it's like you know like oh man that was like trying to inflate a dog and then finding out that there was a hole in the tail like whatever but this lady nailed it 
like it's like, like it's not just oh i believe in jesus christ and he'll deliver me from my sins or from illness it's like man boring heard it she's like i i took a bucket of jesus's blood and i poured it over me i have blood all over me right now it's like uh, go on. Well, and and I don't know that she's a mastermind genius of sound bites. I think she just oh, no, said no, no, whatever. No, 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 that's yeah. But but again, the result is the same. You know, the 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 that that's that's what the reporter needs to finish the story. I I think oh, man, I wonder if anybody has sort of run a comparative analysis. By the of, way, by the way, who are you going to challenge in the Jesus's blood challenge? You have to name five people at the end of the video. After <laughs> you talk, Jesus's blood on you. Uh, the, it's almost a bit. I wonder how much of that dynamic is similar to a hypnosis show because in a hypnosis show you create with this theatrical construct that there's a thing called hypnosis that causes people to do things that they would normally never ever do and weirdly by positing that thing and by creating the social proof and by getting people up on stage and then self-selecting for you know eliminating everybody who's not the most flexible you get people who just no thinking or whatever. It becomes this improv theater thing. And people are shockingly good. People who never thought of themselves as improv actors when they disable all of those filters, whether it's, you know, an intentional thing through training or an unintentional thing of like you're brought up on stage by a stage hypnotist. I wonder how much of that is exactly what just happened in in, in that kind of soundbite where it's like all of a sudden there's cameras, there's lights, there's a question, and just all your filters are disabled, and you just come out with, with stuff that not even you expected would, would, would be good. Yeah, yeah, maybe. And by the way, I, I, before, because this is we we're running up here on the end already, but uh, I, uh, I just kind of refuse to join the dog pile on this lady because, like, is there anybody not panicked? I'm a with you. Bit? I'm with you. And and also to her, it's very clear that from her perspective, this was a question of uh, if you translated between the lines, it was a question of uh, why did you go to church? And the answer is because my faith is so important to me, I would rather die than than not obey the rules yeah. of my faith. Uh, now, it came out in this perfectly, you know, retweetable soundbite. But uh, man, this is the part that bums me out because. Well, no, no, no. But here's, but here's my thing: is I do think that look, if you are uh, uh, following these social distancing guidelines and you're following the federal guidelines and you're understanding the death toll that's piled up in Spain and Italy and and you know we have over a thousand dying a day here in America. Granted, it's a bigger area, but specifically in the New York City area, this is a major problem. Then the frustration that you should take out is on the pastor. The pastor or the, or, the, or the person who's running the church, that's the person where, who you should be saying, hey, have we thought about Zoom? Have I, we thought about Twitch? I don't know, because at some point, uh, yet, yes and, doesn't that rob that particular woman of her agency? Because uh, Does that imply that she's just a cog to be manipulated? Which I don't know is fair to her, because she's the one who no, but, but, decides but, to interpret the words. Are, are, are are you a cog uh, uh, that that uh, you'd still like to go to the sports bar across from your house every once in a while and play Hearthstone? But at a certain point, between a decision between the state and those owners deciding not to defy the order, right? Shut but down but your even to do if it. even if the manager at Torchies was just like, "Come, my brethren, we have access IPAs, we have juicy haze IPAs, we have <laughs> rum and cokes galore. Your trashy trailer uh, 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 taco awaits you, my brothers and sisters." I would exercise my own good judgment and say that's a very compelling argument. However, I will not be attending, and that is fine. But also, there would be many that would go. And if the point is, we, we are at this very weird Sims perspective. And that's, I think, what is kind of breaking a lot of our brains is that, like, there is a certain type of brain that believes that we can just edit our society like Sims, right? And it's like, this would all be done if several turns ago we would have just put on max protect mode and made all of our sims stay in their houses right oh. uh but that's not the way that the world really works and at a certain point if what you want to do is stop clusters of people 
then you have to say that these clusters can't uh can't gather i can't let this go unacknowledged but in the chat dan wally uh says remember stupid is a choice you're born an idiot next line you're with an apostrophe spelled correctly (laughs) (laughs) i mean that's just it is is uh uh, how would you like it dan wally uh, in uh, you know not not to make a, a thing of it but it's like like to that woman, it was that level of mistake, only amplified seven figures fold by the fact that it was on CNN and all of a sudden got spread around. It's uh, I, I man, once I read the the John Ronson novel or not novel, a uh, nonfiction book. So you've been publicly shamed. It really yeah. fundamentally altered my perception of all that. Like I don't enjoy participating in any of those uh, of that mob stuff. Well, and and again, I, I just think that like. If there's one thing that's on display there, and I get it, the religion thing turns everything inside out for a lot of people. But, like, uh, I see panic. I see somebody that knows that there is danger, that that knows that, that, they're, that the world has gone topsy-turvy, and how they process that panic might be different. How much preparation they had for that panic, how much they they might have even welcomed that panic is, is up to your interpretation. Uh, but... I certainly saw somebody that was on edge and I think we're all on edge where, I mean, that's the reason why we're doing this. Like we're not just doing this randomly. We're doing this because Brian and I have a little bit more spare time and we want to put a little bit more love uh, out into the universe. And so that's how we're processing this panic. And and that's, that's the only thing I just hope going forward is that, uh, you know, like, like you uh, started this off saying that we're going to have a, we're going to have a stack of dead bodies by the end of this week. And it's going to be weird because we know it's coming. Yeah. And uh, uh, that like empathy. I know that we always say it. I know that that's like the common refrain of social media, but good God. Uh, I mean, this week, if we could, if we could try, it would be really nice, man. That's definitely where I'm at. And I guess, I guess we're up against, uh, the hour. Um, uh, uh, yeah, let's, let's do some good vibe stuff happening right now. What, what, what are you uh, in this, our toughest week? What are you most dialed in on that you can find joy and hope in besides Ozark season three, which by the way is great. Well, I mean, I don't want to get political, but, um, there's this, uh, guy that, um, you know, he's in his basement and you pretty much just see him from the kind of shoulders up. He's like very famous. Um, and he, he, you know, Tom the stuff Merritt, the stuff he's saying, no, no, no. You know, um, the president uh, of the United States. <laughs> no, the other, who's the guy uh, that's running for president uh, that now he only does, doesn't do any live events. He's just kind of in his <laughs> basement. This is Bernie Sanders. No, no. Yeah. Joe, uh, Joe Biden? Well, yeah. Uh, 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 that, but instead, uh, Joe uh, Exotic. Really who I was really who I was describing was the Crypt Keeper. Because <laughs> I've just realized right now that that's effectively the same person. Joe Biden is the Crypt Keeper. <laughs> Somebody get the clip from my stream earlier today. <laughs> but I put together... <laughs> we can go out of this. Does that it's mean? A- does that mean that we've that 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 we've gotten drunk at World of Beers with the Democratic with frontrunner Joe Biden, <laughs> with former Vice President Joe Biden? I put I put a clip of him because all he does is do the same shot from his basement. Either he's uploading it to his Twitter or he's on cable news with it. But so he, he comes clip. in, it's all of a sudden he goes, it plays the Democratic theme song, and he goes, Hello, booze and blues. Are you ready to take the presidency? <laughs> it's just, <laughs> Hey, listen, fat. Uh, cut the malarkey. We're here to take the presidency. <laughs> Let's give him an old fashioned corn pop in the face. That's what I say. <laughs> it's me, the crypt keeper. I, I, had, I just, I couldn't stop laughing. I, I, I was putting Joe Biden talking over crypt keeper. By the way, footage. by the way, that 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 is is very very close to. Uh, Tales from the Crypt being Tales from the Crips, which is uh, the blue team versus the red the team. The blue team, yeah, yeah. right? 
Yeah, no, that's pretty good. Um, oh man. All right. Well, here, I'll, I'll have to just send this to you, uh, another, another time. Uh, but I think, I think, I think you will, I think you will get a kick out of it as well. Maybe right, we'll do it on the, uh, on the show. Oh, gambling man's got it. Oh, 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 just in time. Here we go. Let's take a look at this moment. Uh, here we go. Click to unmute. Got it. Uh, not Joe Biden joins us right now. Good morning, Mr. Vice President. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me on the show. I appreciate <laughs> it. And I wish you well. <laughs> we just heard uh, President Trump. All right. Get ready. <laughs> that's that's, get that's ready. all we needed. <laughs> that's fine. There we go. That's enough. There's another better clip, but screw it. Let's uh oh, let, let's go ahead and get out of here for right today. Now. Brian, a uh, happy, happy hour to you. Uh goddamn right, man. Happy, happy hour to you. We'll be here all week long. We'll be here as long as it requires to bring you the love, support, attention, and joy that you deserve every single motherfucking day. Uh we love you guys, man. Hang in there. Be good. Till the next happy hour. We're out. <laughs>